Designers everywhere are asking the same question. Is it finally time to leave Webflow for Framer? If you're here, chances are you're probably wondering the exact same thing. In this video, I'll break down the exact reasons why some designers are switching and why some aren't. We'll get into the positive, the negative of each platform so you can make your decision better and stick around for the bonus section at the end. By the way, I'm Bupin, a web designer with more than three years of experience. And on this channel, I dive deep into the no code design with tools like Framer and Webflow. If you want to level up your design game, hit the subscribe button and let's learn together. All right, let's dive in. So why are we even talking about this switch? Webflow has been around for a while now and it's a go-to platform for many designers. It's powerful and flexible, but some things have changed. Lately, Framer has been making a lot of noise in the design world. And it's not just because it's a new tool on the block. Framer is changing game with an easy way to make smooth and animated websites. And you don't need to worry about all the technical stuff, which is pretty cool if you ask me. All right, here's where things get interesting. Let's compare the two side to side, starting with CMS. Webflow is a powerhouse here. It lets you manage dynamic content like a pro. Whether you're building a blog or an e-commerce website, Webflow's relational links between different CMS makes it super easy to create advanced filter tabs on the website. But uh, this is not the case with Framer CMS. It's growing, no doubt, but uh, it's more suitable for smaller projects. So I'll definitely prefer Webflow here. Now let's talk about the learning curve. In the case of Webflow, if terms like Flexbox, Box Models or Classes are new to you, then it may seem overwhelming. But once you get the basics, you'll see how powerful it really is. But Framer though is super easy to learn. You can start creating something awesome in just a few hours. It's got a user-friendly design like Figma, which makes it perfect if you are just starting out. So I'll definitely prefer Framer here. Both tools are great for animations and interactivity, but in different ways. Webflow is like a well-made tool, great for people who enjoy making small adjustments to create complex animations. If you're a detail-oriented person, you'll love this. Framer, on the other hand, focuses on smooth, ready-made animations that look amazing without the hassle. It's uh, perfect for designers who want a seamless flow without the complications. Plus, Framer's components are a game changer. You can create stunning, complex animations that feel almost magical. So I have to say, when it comes to animations, Framer takes a win. Let's talk collaboration, because this is where Framer really stands out. Framer offers real-time collaboration which means you and your teammates can work on the same project simultaneously and you can see changes happen live in the moment. It's perfect for teams who want instant feedback and a truly seamless workflow. But Webflow on the other hand doesn't offer real-time collaboration. Instead, it relies more on a traditional handoff workflow where designer and developer, they work in stages. While it's still effective for larger teams or agencies, but it doesn't have that uh, interactive live atmosphere that Framer brings to the table. So I'll definitely prefer Framer here. This is something which is overlooked by majority of people and it is phone support. Here's a quirky difference. Webflow integrates with Adobe fonts, which is super handy if you're someone like me who loves to use Adobe fonts in almost all of his projects. But Framer does not support Adobe fonts just yet. This might be a deal breaker for some of you, although both of them support Google fonts and custom fonts. So I'll definitely prefer Webflow here. Alright, here's the bonus I promised. Expert tips to help you decide between Framer and Webflow. So the tip number one is understand your client. Think about who you're designing for. If your site requires advanced animations and interactions, then Framer is unbeatable here. But if your site requires advanced features like memberships or large scale CMS, then Webflow is unbeatable here. So the tip number two is start small. Don't just jump into a massive project right away. Try to make a small test project on both platforms. 
This way you will know which one works better for you. The tip number three is community and resources. Both tools have great community and resources. If you want to master their advanced features, you should definitely check out their templates and forums. Remember, the best tool is the one that works for you, your project and your skill set. Don't overthink. Use both and see which one suits you better. So there you have it, Webflow and Framer, each with their own strength and weaknesses. The key isn't choosing sides here. It's about finding the right tool that helps you create your best work. Now I want to hear from you. Which tool do you prefer? And what should I cover next? Tutorials, tips, a deep dive into workflows? Let me know in the comments. If this video gave you any value, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with someone who's facing the same debate. And I'll see you in the next one.